Hi everybody, my name is Kristen Anderson. I am a survivor. I dissected type A in August of 2017. This is my second survivor video, my update. Uh, first one I did was a few months after my event. Uh, and man, if you can dig that baby up in the archives, you will you'll see the difference. Um, I've come a long, uh, I've come a long way since then. In fact, I think I was kind of drunk. I know I cried through most of it. Anyway, I am a comedian. I was in Summers Point, New Jersey for the night. Uh, I live in Minneapolis, flew to do the show and go right home the next day. My daughter called me five minutes before the show, hysterical, her boyfriend, ex, just ex-boyfriend, suicided. Which means that um, she almost lost us both in the same hour. And in that moment, my heart uh, popped. I felt this little pop. Hang on, my dog has to go out. All right, quick, quick. Sorry about that. I'm at the cabin in Wisconsin by myself. I'm spousal distancing. Anyway, uh, where was I? I went on stage, right? The show was in five minutes and I went on and I did my show and uh, and I killed and I put my whole heart into it. But I'm bummed. Anyway, um, it was painful. I, 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 and I did have a really great set. Anyway, it was uh, pain and numbness was coming, was running down my jaw. Uh, and just, it was painful and so unusual and unlike anything I'd ever, uh, ever felt. I did my show, I got done. Uh, when the next comic went up, she was finished, we left. And I, I should have just gone straight to the ER. But I didn't want to be a bother. I didn't think it's uh, well, maybe it wasn't a big deal. So into the gas station, we got some Tums and some baby aspirin, thinking that would take care of it. Of course, it didn't take care of it. I, I still didn't go to the ER. I don't know what my problem was, but I said, take me back to the hotel. So I'm back to the hotel and uh, walked in the door and threw up. Uh, called my husband, told him what was going on, and he said, you know, why don't you just sleep on it? See how you feel in the morning. So my husband almost killed me. Uh, I knew that I wouldn't make it until the morning. So finally I put my stuff together and I um, got the nerve to call, I'm sorry, I got the nerve to text Carrie, which really, why would it? Anyway, I just kept, I just kept not wanting to be a bother. And I texted her and she said, no problem. She came, uh, she went out to her car and by this time, my legs were numb and I was having trouble walking. But I made it to the car. We made it to the ER. The last thing I remember was giving my insurance information and my husband's phone number to Carrie. And I don't remember anything else. Um, in the next moment, in my mind, I was in, I woke up in an ambulance with an hour and a half journey in front of me and by the way i went to penn medicine where they saved my life it was the best one of the best places i could have gone i had one of the top surgeons in the country uh, but had it happened i was told later by uh, the battle axe nurse when i say that respectfully that i um, if i had dissected during rush hour i wouldn't have made it they were scrubbed and waiting for me i had a three percent chance of survival and the EMT, one of them, I remember her and I didn't remember the look on her face until much later um, when I went to get treated for PTSD, which by the way, is super helpful. I couldn't stop the loop from um, running in my head. Uh, and it, it, was, it was nightmare after nightmare after nightmare. And my psychiatrist uh, finally recommended that to me and it was a game changer. So. Keep that in mind. It was arrested, arrested. What am I talking about? Arrested development. J Justin Baseman helped, helped me get through my, okay. Um, art therapy, accelerated resolution therapy. And they give it to soldiers uh, with PTSD. Anyway, it just moved the trauma from one part of my brain uh, to another part of my brain. 
And like I said, it was a game changer. Anyway, I remembered uh, when I was doing that, I remembered the look on her face while we were riding in the ambulance. And I remember that the look on her face didn't think that I was going to make the journey. Didn't think I was going to live through it. Anyway, I did. I did live through it. I woke up a week later looking for my husband. Uh, he had been there for four days. Uh, and when he thought they were going to be able to get me off the ventilator, he stayed, changed his flight. Um, I know that the doctor, the respiratory doctor sat with me for like three hours uh, so that he could get that, take that out at just the right time. And he was really great. I do remember him. And apparently after I came out, my husband said he was going to go get a cup of coffee. And I mouthed to him, like anybody who's going to let me have coffee, I have no recollection of that at all. My friend Phil was then there taking care of me, making sure I didn't have, you know, my arm over my heart, uh, taking notes, calling my husband right by my side, um, flirting with the nurses. He was funny anyway. Then he flew in when he had to go. He flew in another friend, a comedian that I had recently met in Denver. I didn't know her that well. I liked her an awful lot. He flew her in and she came and she stayed on the shitty chair in the that folded out in the hospital room for three days to take care of me, keep me company. It, it was it was so loving. I there was so much love. I'm telling you, love saved me. And following that, uh, the surgeon wouldn't let me leave to go back to Minneapolis. So I went to Maryland. Uh, my brother-in-law picked me up and I stayed with my husband's sister and her husband in the middle of the country. And man, I couldn't have been in a better place. If I had a convalesce, I was in a really great, peaceful place to do it. But I was also in the middle of nowhere. And I was alone during the day and I was frightened and the pain wasn't going away and I wasn't able to eat and I, I, I was frightened out of my mind. I felt like I was gonna blow at any minute. I didn't know. Um, when I was pregnant with my son, I had um, an AVM repair. So I had brain surgery and I didn't know if there was a connection. So I really just felt like I was a ticking time bomb. I, I, was, I was scared out of my mind and I was never, ever so happy to see my husband as I was when that two weeks was up and he came to get me and went and got a chest x-ray, got an all clear and went home. And he bought me a first class ticket. It was pretty sweet. We're not first class people. But I mean, if somebody gives me a first class ticket, I can be a first class person, but generally speaking, no. I got home. I was so happy to see my daughter. We were so happy to be in each other's arms. It was moving it was emotional and then 10 minutes later she's like mom i'm gonna go see taylor is that okay and then, <laughs> yeah honey that was okay uh, i had a village of people helping bringing meals um people that really understood what had happened to me hugged me um tighter uh you know not the painful kind because i just uh, but i had a lot of love and a lot of support uh, a lot of appointments too. I got really tired of that. I was very depressed. I was um, crying all the time and I hated all the appointments. I mean, I just, it was, it was like a job going to all these appointments. Um, I do have a friend, a very dear friend of mine, Patty Peterson, uh, who um, had the same event happen to her at that time, I think it was 12 or 13 years earlier. And I remember bringing her a meal uh, while she was recovering. I don't remember that, I don't think, I just didn't remember that it was the same. Hold on, the dog has to come in. Okay, sorry. Thanks for hanging in there. Come on, buddy. Um, she'd have the same thing happen to her and I didn't remember that. I, I mean, I just didn't remember that it was what had happened to John Ritter. Uh, I did ask my surgeon, is this what happened to John Ritter? This is exactly what happened to John Ritter. 
So anyway, uh, Patty's one of my best friends and what are the odds? And she was really supportive and she talked me through a lot. And when I got home, I remember being in my closet melting. I mean, I just, I was completely hysterical. I, I just thought I, w I, I was just, and she, I called her and she said, you're having a reality meltdown. And she was right. And I, I was so afraid. I was just so afraid. And if you've had this happen to you, and you have because you're watching this, uh, you understand that fear. And uh, I am so grateful, and I continue to be grateful to have her. We we talk often. We see each other. And it's helpful for her, too, to have me that's been through it, you know. So we have a really uh, beautiful in-person uh, connection and friendship, uh, along with all the support Aorta Cope offers and they do offer a lot of support. I'm not in that room a lot. I don't go in the rooms a whole lot uh, because I have to keep my fear in check. And if I hang out there too much, um, this messes with me. You know, my husband used to say, I can tell when you've been on there, you've been hanging out in the rooms too much. Uh, so anyway, uh, but it's a great, uh, a great support system. So I got home and I was recovering and, you know, within, I don't know how long it was, everybody went back to their lives, right? Everybody went back to their lives and they should have been. That's how it was supposed to happen. You know, my husband went back to his schedule. The kids were in school. Uh, they were, and, uh, but I still had this one foot in quicksand, unable to move. Um, and I had pump head and so I couldn't remember anything. And I had a lot of shame that I couldn't remember my words. And then a lot of hatred for um, the person trying to be funny who said, oh, that's menopause. And yeah, um, yeah, okay, asshole. It was a menopause. I'm in menopause, I know what that is. Uh, and I still have that. Like I still have trouble finding my words. Um, it got better for a while. And uh, recently it's it's gotten worse. And I guess I just have to live with it and do a lot of Sudoku. Is that, I don't know. Um, anyway, so here I am. Um, I made it through my first year and Patty said, they, there will be such a difference. You'll feel it after you hit your one year mark. And she was right. Uh, I did, I did feel differently. It was a really big deal. Uh, right before I had my one year checkup, I I was pretty scared. I was, even though I'd had the treatment, the PTSD stuff, the game changer, that was so great. I got really afraid. Uh, and anyway, I was, I was crying all the time and I was just really super worried about what I was going to hear at that appointment. And I heard the words that Patty, Patty waits to hear every single year, which is no change, see you in a year. And that's what I got, no change, see you in a year. So I'll be at two years in August, on August 21st. Um, and here I am, a ton better. Um, the fear is still there, but it, it doesn't take over. I've moved forward, um, I've moved forward with my career and my speaking career, uh, my comedy career, I'm, I'm just uh, full bore. Of course, now we're sitting in COVID. I hope you're all healthy. Uh, I guess I'll have to go virtual anyway. That's my story. Big difference, big difference between then and now. Um, I still have the crunchy thing. I thought that would go away, uh, but it doesn't. And the, one of the things that I'm gonna add is that I, I had so much pain in my back, like uh, inside my scapula, and I, I, I couldn't figure out what it was. And Patty sent me to the chiropractor and it was a rib that was out. So if you're having that issue and you don't know why you have it um, and you're of a mind to see a chiropractor, do it because it was really helpful and he helped help me move all of this stuff too, to kind of get into a place. It was painful, but worth it. Um, and don't go to a chiropractor unless you get a recommendation from somebody anyway. All right. 
that's my story. Um, like I said, I don't hang out in the rooms, but if you need support or you need an ear, find me. I'm on Facebook. Uh, it's Kristen Anderson Anderson on Facebook. Anderson S E N hyphenated S O N. Yes, I was an Anderson. I married Anderson anyway. Uh, so that's it. I'm here if you need me. I hope you're all well and healthy. Um, and I send you my best. Bye.